Greetings, fellow Godless Rockers. I'm Steve. And I'm Tally from Monster on Sunday. In this week's BAM vlog, we answer the question, are religious people stupid? Should atheists be so bold as to engage in conversations on the topic of religion? This is a question that many get asked from their religious family and friends. Also, we'll take a sneak peek behind the scenes as I show you my pre-production rig rundown. So stay tuned for episode six of Godless Rockers. Okay guys, so here's the deal. If you've dared to contradict your family, friends, or just some peeps spouting about God on Facebook, you've probably been accused of calling them stupid. We have definitely heard this accusation a time or two. So let's dive into the subject of whether believing in God makes you a moron. Looking at the science behind the topic, there's quite a bit of research into the subject, particularly a 2013 meta-analysis of 63 different studies that analyze the correlation between intelligence and faith. The conclusion by psychologists Miran Zuckerman and Jordan Silverman of the University of Rochester and Judith Hall of Northeast University is that people of faith are less intelligent than atheists. Their most common explanation of these results is that intelligent people don't like to accept any beliefs that are not subject to empirical tests or logical reasoning. Zuckerman writes in the review that intelligent people may think more analytically, which is controlled, systematic, and slow, as opposed to intuitively, which is heuristic-based, mostly non-conscious, and fast. So basically, that analytical thinking leads to lower religiosity. Well, since that came out, there have been a lot of articles debating the subject, and it seems that whether or not religious people are less intelligent is perhaps a matter of debate. Aww. So instead, we'll speak personally on the subject of whether or not we believe that God believers are actually stupid. I've had a bit of experience within my own family on this topic, particularly in my conversations about God with my brother, a missionary for the Calvary Chapel who spent 10 plus years planting churches in other countries. He went to Calvary Chapel Bible College and is raising all three of his kids in a household dominated by this brand of God. Over the last 20 years, we've had too many discussions to count, and on several occasions I've been accused by him of thinking religious people are stupid. At the time, though, I didn't say as much. Part of me was screaming, yes, and part of me was thinking, well, no, not really. During these conversations, it's quite difficult for an atheist to not see the ideas of the religious person to be of subpar intelligence. In fact, at times it almost seems like they can't be serious. Often the accusation that atheists are just calling the religious stupid is not because you called them stupid, it's because you called something they believe stupid, or idiotic, or childish. This difference between the believer and the belief is a very important distinction. I like to quote... The British journalist Johan Hari, I have so much respect for you that I cannot respect your ridiculous ideas. There is something very important that I can attest to here. Once you've left religion behind, it's very easy to step back from a distance and see how silly your former beliefs were. It's like when you stop believing in Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, or the Tooth Fairy. Here's the thing, all people can be stupid, and even idiots can be smart on occasion. Though it feels tempting to do, we cannot paint each other with such a broad brush. That's right. And so the answer to the question, are religious people stupid, is yes, yes. and no. no. Just like everyone else on earth, including atheists, there are extremely intelligent people that believe in very stupid things, especially if taught from a young age. Here's another thing to think about. Many atheists were once religious. Does that mean that they were dumb before and then became smart? I don't think so. I doubt their IQ increased noticeably from one phase of life to the next. On that note, Matt Dillhoney has pointed out many times that he does not think religious people are stupid and that he was a religious person for over 20 years. Having once upon a time been right. theist and now being atheist, I'm pretty sure my IQ didn't go up. It's not like you have to be incredibly boneheadedly uninformed and almost mentally deficient to accept religion. There are brilliant people who accept religious claims as well. I think there's something else going on other than a matter of intelligence. Thanks, Matt Dillahoney. So, as an atheist, I believe I made an intelligent choice not to believe due to lack of evidence. But I don't think atheism can be equated with intelligence in general any more than religion can be equated with stupidity. Now, that being said, we must point out that certain prescriptions are inherent in religion that may contribute to a flawed way of thinking. If somewhere within the Bible, I were to find a passage that said 2 plus 2 equals 5, I wouldn't question what I'm reading in the Bible. I would believe it, accept it as true, and then do my best to work it out and to understand. I would so believe it. <coughs> That's right. 
logic, reason, and the quest for evidence are things all people should be encouraged to pursue, not their opposite, which is faith, dogmatic belief, and the denial of evidence. Another problem inherent in religious belief is social pressures that encourage believers to stay. Those who dare voice their doubts or do something even more vile, like admit non-belief, had better be prepared to be ridiculed, shunned, disowned by their family, or even in extreme cases, face violence. To go against this pressure, you often need a personality type that is okay with bucking the norm, causing a ruckus, and willing to question everything, regardless of the consequences. Maybe we'll find out one day that atheism is more about personality type than smarts. At least this seems to be true for us. We're just lowly musicians, not academic scholars. And if you have your own ideas about this complicated topic, please comment below. Speaking of being musicians, let's go behind the scenes with Monster on Sunday and check out my pre-production rig rundown. So this is Reaper and this is what I use for pre-production Reaper. It's simple, easy to use, and quick. First, I record my guitar. Just about every pre-production song, I'm using my Fender Strat which is American made. These are extra hot pickups and so they give me some good sounds that I like. I also have a Gibson SG and finally the Schecter Corsair with the Bixby Tremelo system. For my guitar everything goes through this guitar pedal board and so everything turns on with this one switch a button right here. Now all my pedals are ready to go. It's actually on two different planes and that makes it easy for me not to hit the pedals on top when I'm trying to hit the pedals on bottom and vice versa. And then it goes straight to this mixer, which has a double input jack. That double input jack takes both my guitar and bass and puts it through the same channel, so it just switch back and forth. And then it goes through the M audio system from there into my computer and my headphones, and that's how I hear what's going on. And then once it's into the computer and into Reaper, I use this Hebrit pollen. This is a amplifier simulator, and it's going to sound pretty similar to my real amplifier. So I'll usually write the drums to go with the guitar, and then I'll play the bass on top of it. This is what I'm using for drums, Easy Drummer. Now if I play the drum track, you can see the drums going. It's doing this all because I plan it through a MIDI. With the MIDI I can select notes and I can tell it to play them. Also today I want a pre-selected loop. There's one. Once so I've recorded the guitar, the drums into here, then I can record bass. So for bass, I use this, which is a simple Yamaha bass. It's in the nuts for pre-production. For bass, everything goes straight through this ME50B, through the mixer, and then back into here. So that's everything, guys. Thanks so much, and see ya. So thanks for joining us for another episode of Godless Rockers. Tune in for next week's episode at the New Zinc Festival, where we hang out, discuss the concert, and enjoy some bad religion, Pennywise, and swinging udders with Ian Harris. Also, check out last week's episode, where we address another common question from the religious. Are you guys Satanists? Right here. And click here to check out our store, where you can get music, merch, and more. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, subscribe. so you never miss an episode. See you next Sunday at noon. We're Monstrous Sunday! Thanks for joining us on Godless Rockers. Rockers.